Hi, my name is Michael Fox. I work at the River Church in Holly, Michigan. I uh, wanted to put together a quick tutorial for you guys um, on how we do live streaming. I thought it might be helpful to kind of see uh, our take on that. Um, the River Church, we currently have six locations uh, throughout Michigan. So um, we do live streaming every week. We originally did it from two of our locations. And then this is actually being filmed during uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic in 2020. So um, in this moment, we're not able to meet as a church on site uh, because we've all been ordered to stay at home. So we're actually live streaming from all six of our locations uh, right now. So we were uh, forced to uh, ramp up um, four of our locations really quickly. So I'll kind of walk through how we did that as well. Um, but from one of our locations in Holly, I'm going to go through kind of how we um, live stream. And then I'll talk about how we also solve this at some of our smaller locations uh, as well. So there's a lot of ways to do live streaming. A lot of different products out there. Um, really isn't a right or wrong way. But I just want to go through how we do it. And uh, hopefully that's helpful. So uh, in Holly, I'll go through a quick explanation of the products that we use. Uh, to accomplish live streaming. So I'll, uh, I'll put it out another video on exactly how we accomplish um, our video equipment and our strategies and stuff with video. So this, this video really kind of takes it from the video output into streaming. So I'm not really going to cover uh, how we do our three camera live shoots or anything like that. Um, so we have a Blackmagic um, ATEM switcher. Uh, we have one of their older models, but here's their web current website. They have several different options. Uh, we have one of their um, ATEM 2ME switchers. So I think they're currently selling this 4ME. Uh, so that, that means that we can do two switches out. Um, so we have several inputs in this switcher, and then we can do an output. Uh, so that output is either HDMI or SDI. So coming out of our switcher, we have an SDI output. And then I'm currently using one of Blackmagic's uh, SDI to HDMI converters. Um, in from that, I'm going into a Teradek Video Pro. And I think I have, oh, you know what? That's actually discontinued, so I don't have a website for that right now. Um, but that is the encoder, um, and it's also streaming out to our server. So the Teradek Video Pro, it's got an HDMI in. That's converting that signal uh, for the web. And I'm using Wowza streaming engine. So I'm going from our location in Holly, streaming out to a server. Um, it's a Linux server running Wowza streaming engine. And I'm running that on Amazon's um, AWS. So I'm renting a Linux server from Amazon every week. Um, that way I don't have the overhead of that server on site or the cost there, which is a great option. Uh, if you guys have never looked into Amazon AWS, um, it's real cheap and, and a good way to go. So going from our location into Wowza Streaming Engine on an Amazon Linux server, and then that software running on that Linux server distributes that stream to our website, uh, to our app, our mobile app, and then also to Facebook and YouTube. So it's actually going to four places. Um, and that's the main reason I use uh, the Wowza streaming engine is to distribute it and it also encodes it in several different bit rates. So it does quite a bit for me there. Um, so that's the overview of how we're doing streaming and the equipment that we use. Um, I'll give you the quick alternatives that we're doing. So at some of our smaller locations, we don't have video switchers or anything like that in place. So what we've done is uh, we have a one, one camera shoot. We just have one camera in the back of the room. It's got an HDMI output. And then we go from that camera into an encoder. So that can be several different things. Um, we have some Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio Mini Recorders. It's a little box that converts the HDMI into uh, Thunderbolt to get into a computer. Um, at some of our locations, currently we're using an Elgato Game Capture uh, device. Again, that's converting the HDMI into USB. Uh, I'm not in love with that device, but again, in the midst of this crisis that we're in, um, I wasn't able to get some of the equipment I wanted. So Best Buy sold um, that device that I was able to use as a capture card. 
Uh, then Black Magic makes some other stuff. Uh, there's a Black Magic Design Intensity Shuttle that works great for that. And then they just came out with a new product. It's actually a switcher in itself. It's the Black Magic Design ATEM Mini. Uh, so it's a four port switcher, but it also has a USB out. So it can be your encoder as well to get it into your computer. So that's a great little device if you don't have a switcher. So I take, uh, again, that camera into an encoder, little encoder box, and then that plugs into my computer. And in my computer, I'm running um, some software. Uh, we're currently using Wirecast, Telestream's Wirecast. And then there's also a free piece of software called OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. So you can use that um, to take that camera signal and actually stream it out to the web. So in those softwares, uh, you could go directly to Facebook or YouTube, but again, I'm going uh, into my Wowza streaming engine, which then distributes it to the four locations. So that's an alternative way that we're currently using to stream at some of our smaller locations in this moment. <clears throat> so the uh, key components to streaming that you'll want to cover if you're looking into it, again, there's so many different ways uh, to do it. There's, there's great products out there now. Um, you know, basically video switchers on iPads uh, that you can use iPhones, you know, as cameras and then switch on the, on the iPad um, all the way up to your professional level video switchers. So I consider myself kind of in the middle of the road. Uh, Blackmagic Design, if you haven't heard of them, is a great company, real affordable. Um, I find their products to be uh, very easy to use. Uh, they have a great feature set and they're also real affordable. Uh, so that's the main reason that we use those. So some of the key components that I want to dive into real quick of streaming, obviously you need a camera. That could look a lot of different ways. Um, you can obviously do it from a cell phone. You can go from a cell phone right to Facebook. Um, you know, there's some quality issues there, especially with audio. Um, but at any rate, you need a camera. And then uh, typically you'll want your camera to have an SDI or HDMI output, which most of them do nowadays. So out of that camera, you're going to go into a capture device uh, or an encoder. And then out of that, you're either going to go into a streaming box. Uh, there's several companies out there that will um, sell hardware encoders, or you need a software encoder. Again, I you know I touched on that. Uh, Wirecast, OBS, Open Broadcaster Software are great softwares there. Um, so I'm not going to dive too much into cameras. Uh, there's so many different options out there. I will tell you um, what we use real quick. So on B&H's website here, this is the camera that we're currently using. It's a 1080p camera. It's a JVC a GY HM620. Uh, it's a kind of a middle of the road camera. I feel it does a really good job, um, but it's not, uh, you know, a real cheap handheld camera either. So that has an SDI out on it. Uh, so that's what I'm using. Again, I'm going into my Blackmagic ATEM switcher. So then out of that, um, like I said, I'm using the Teradek Video Pro which that specific uh, model is discontinued, but they have, so if you search Teradek, you know, on any website, I'm on B&H, um, you can get lots of different encoders and under these, the video system, they have their new products here. So that's the hardware encoder um, that you wanna use. So basically uh, that takes the video signal, video and audio signal in turns it into a web stream. So you put in the IP address. Uh, in my case, like I said, I'm going to that Wowza server. So I put in the IP address of my Wowza server, some different things, excuse me, and it uh, sends it off to that server. So I'm gonna dive into that server next uh, in case you guys wanna kinda of see that. So again, in Amazon, I'm using the uh, Amazon's AWS system to uh, you know basically rent a server by the hour. So. Um, if you search, once you set up an account with Amazon for that, if you just Google search um, Amazon EC2 Wowza AMI, so an AMI is a pre-built uh, server image, you will get right to the Wowza streaming engine uh, running on Linux um, AMI. So basically what that does is you launch this into Amazon's system and it will launch a server for you with the Wowza software already installed on it, which is great. Um, so just a quick overview here you can see. Um, there's different server sizes. That's what all these options here are. 
different server sizes to put it on. So I currently run on the C4 extra large server. So you can see this is per hour. Um, the first one is the software cost. So you're paying 49 cents to rent that so Wowza software per hour. And then you're paying 19 cents um, to rent the server from Amazon per hour. So you can see how affordable this can be um, to run that server. So I'm gonna dive into the server itself. And there's only really a few basic things you wanna do to it after you load uh, from that base image. Um, so you can see, you know, it'll tell you exactly how many connections you have uh, on your server at any given time. Kind of gives you an idea of, of your server uh, status there. So it'll give you a default live application, which is what you need to stream. So under Applications Live, I'm just going to run through this real quick. So under Transcoder, you can set this up to take your stream. So say you're streaming in at 1080p. In my case, I actually stream in at 720p currently. Um, it'll take that full res stream and um, so say you were bringing in at 1080 you could have it transcode to 720 also 360 also 160 so that way if any of your users are on a mobile connection um, it'll give them a lower quality stream uh, which will work good for that so it has that transcoder feature which is awesome you can put DRM on there if you need to protect your content it has a DVR feature so that if somebody's watching live and they want to pause it or if somebody comes late into your live stream you can allow them to kind of rewind and watch that so that's a great feature um, you can add some different you know security if you need to lock down your stream for some reason um, and then under stream targets um, there's obviously lots of so if I go to add you can see there's lots of uh, third-party options here that you can send it out to so you can see I have configured Facebook and YouTube so I went through and configured you know how to stream to Facebook it's basically just you log into your account and configure what page you want to go to YouTube uh, you have to go over to YouTube and get some credentials from them a, a URL and a, a login basically it allows you to stream over to YouTube and then like I said I uh, stream to our website and our app so I'm actually using a third party a uh, piece of software called JW Player. So jwplayer.com, I'm just using this uh, as the player on our website. So you embed this player and then you just uh, point it at the URL of your server and it will stream from that Wowza back to your website. And again, now you're using not your web host bandwidth at this point, you're using Amazon's bandwidth. Uh, so they have a lot more infrastructure there um, when you're streaming that. And then I'm using uh, directly from Wowza, you can get a URL to that that stream that I'm plugging into our app so we use um, the subsplash app and we're able to get that uh, over there um, they also have a player themselves Wowza has a player that you can embed into your website uh, like I mentioned I'm using JW player so once you're streaming under incoming streams you would see you know what's coming in would show up right here and you can do all sorts of stuff um, from monitoring as well uh, on that stream and then once you're streaming, you can go over to server, server monitoring, and you can see how many people are connected in, which is a great way to see who's watching. Um, this wouldn't, this would only connect, uh, show connections for like your website or your app. Um, Facebook and YouTube are are on their own, so you'd have to go over to Facebook and YouTube to get counts uh, for those. All right, so that wraps up my quick overview of how we're doing live streaming uh, at the River Church in Holly, Michigan. Um, I'm recording this um, for my website, technicallychurch.com. So you can find me over at technicallychurch.com um, where I have lots of other tutorials and explanations of lots of fun stuff that we do uh, if you guys are interested. Have a great day.